Today, I'm testing the ability of ChatGPT to pass a first-year law degree exam. The exam's in contract law. Watch till the end of the video to find out what the bot has done and whether it's passed this exam or not. The results will surprise you. The sample exam question for this test are derived from a Pearson textbook companion site. You can find those on the web by following the link down in the description below. I started by feeding the questions whole to ChatGPT without any amendments. You can see the first question on the screen. The first question was a problem question. It was about this company that has a contract to build a motor yacht for somebody. The interior of the yacht is meant to be constructed with a particular type of wood. Turns out, however, that the government has banned the import of this wood and they cannot find it anywhere. Therefore, they are unable to perform the contract. On a second part to the question, they also ask for the price to be increased. The customer agrees to this at first, but then has questions and is asking you for legal advice. The bot considered this for a few seconds and then came up with an answer. Initially, the answer is tactical as opposed to legal. This response will not do as you're supposed to create a response to an exam paper. Tactical as opposed to legal advice would fail to attract a pass mark in a law examination. I asked the bot, therefore, some follow-up questions to see whether the answer could be made more suitable in an exam context. I asked the bot to specify the answer above by explaining how the scenario would be interpreted in the English law of contract. The bot provided an answer by inserting some legal authority. After this follow-up prompt, the bot did a lot better. The problem is that its answer lacks legal authority. It correctly identified the key legal issues. Indeed, frustration is an issue here, and it is possible that the contract will be considered frustrated due to a change in government regulation. For the second part of the question, this is in fact an attempt at a contractual modification. The bot correctly identified the possibility of breach, but did a poor job of addressing what really happened. It does mention what would be needed for the modification to be enforceable and raises the issue of duress, but does not elaborate. I thought I would ask it some follow-up questions to see whether the bot could provide additional supporting legal authority. I said, provide legal authority in English law to back up your earlier answers. The bot came back with some case law. This is better, but not quite correct. Taylor is a frustration case indeed, but not the best one to illustrate frustration through a change of law. A more appropriate case would be, for instance, Fibrosa Spolka. Cater is not appropriate authority for the modification issue. Here the examiner would expect to see some discussion of at least the cases of Stilk, Williams and Roffey, and MWB, including some on economic duress. Further, the human author of this needs to compile this information to produce something that incorporates the authority to the previous answers. See the links down in the description for some short lectures explaining the doctrine of frustration and contractual modification for further information of the law in these areas. In order to compile a complete answer, I ask the bot a following question. Can you combine your responses to a single answer? The bot did indeed do this. The answer it provided in scenario A is adequate but not good. It is at the level of a student who is familiar with the doctrine of frustration but not knowledgeable on the details. On a standard academic marking scale with 40% being a pass and 70% being a distinction mark, the bot would achieve 50%. In scenario B, the answer is a lot weaker. It demonstrates some knowledge of core relevant concepts and identifies the relevant legal issues, but offers no detail on authority and fails to engage in adequate analysis. The mark for this would be a mere pass at 40. A first-year student writing similarly would have passed this exam question with an overall mark of 45. The second question that I tested the bot with was an essay question. As different skills are required to effectively answer problems as opposed to essay questions, it is interesting how the bot fared with this type. The question we asked the bot was to critically evaluate the following statements. Silence can never amount to acceptance. An offeror can never revoke a unilateral offer unless the offeree has begun the stipulated act. And finally, past consideration is not good consideration. I fed this question to ChatGPT and received the answers you can see on the screen. Overall, the bot gave superficially fair answers, but they're not quite correct. The answer to the first question is wrong to the extent that inaction or silence cannot constitute acceptance to a contractual offer due to course of dealing or prior relations, just like that. Action, yet no verbal communication, can. The bot is getting this wrong. On the second sub-question, the bot gets it correctly, but the terminology used is wrong. These are the kinds of mistakes often made by new law students, yet they reduce the value of the answer. For instance, there are issues with the comment on consideration and the concept of unfairness does not map against processes of contractual formation. 
For the final one, the answer starts well but falls flat at the end, as there is some unexplained suggestion that in some contexts past consideration may work, which is wrong. I asked the bot to elaborate to include legal authority. I said, can you add legal authority from the English law of contract to your answer? It proceeded to elaborate on its answers. The cases offered are relevant and support the points made earlier. Combining this authority with the previous answer would have produced a superficial, partially correct answer that confirms the impression gained by testing answers to the previous problem question. The bot performs like an average first-year student. It has the overall appreciation of what's going on, it can identify correctly the relevant legal issues, but struggles with analysis and authority. The bot could sit in my class and I would know the difference. I would mark the answer to the problem question with a 45% overall. What is the overall conclusion of the test? The important takeaway here is that the bot makes mistakes and misses things, but so do first-year students. The idea is not to compare the answers of the bot to the perfect sample answer provided by the examiner, but to compare against what the average student is likely to achieve, in that the bot is very close to the average student performance. Thus, it's not easily detectable as an AI-produced answer. The attempt at the exam paper is also good enough to pass. What this means is that students could use the bot to produce answers that pass timed online exams that are not proctored. While there is some debate on how plagiarism detection tools will include AI-generated text in their verification, I do not believe this is possible or robust. Students could use AI-produced text, pass it through paraphrasing software. Tools like Ternitin are already performing very poorly against paraphrased text, as shown in an earlier test. You can see the link down in the description for that video. The takeaway for universities is that AI text tools present a serious challenge to the integrity of online take-home exams. This cannot be solved through software solutions. It will eventually lead to the abandonment of online timed exams that are not proctored. Do you want to learn more about how to use ChatGPT as a study assistant? Watch next the video on your screen. Thank you for watching and see you next time.